very disappointed in my supervisor. You know, it's it's taken an outcry from probably a hundred different people in the community to get to where we should have been, you know, a couple of months into the pandemic, you know, and we're 13 months down the road now. So thank you for your two efforts, but I am disappointed in the supervisor. Thank you. And thank you, Barry. I, I do want to share that. And I'm not making excuses for anyone, but I do want to share that my office was not aware about this problem till December. So I'm not sure who were the constituents contacting prior to this landing in our office. Uh, but we are aware of it now. And, and, you know, we cover in the Northeast San Fernando Valley office in Van Nuys, we cover 20 communities. So we always um, are very thankful for the constituents that call our office and let us know what's happening in the communities. But, uh, Brenda and I oversee 10 communities each and we try to be everywhere, but it's, you know, a lot for us to, to um, oversee on a daily basis. So we always, um, you know, we always listen to our constituents and we, um, you are our eyes and ears as well. So when we don't see something such as this lot, we are always very thankful for your, um, you know, for that information when you call our office. Uh, so I do apologize for whatever happened in the past. And I, you know, when our office becomes involved and knows that there's issues in lot, lots or county properties, we usually act act appropriately and we take care of the matter. Um, so in the future, everybody here knows moving forward, any county related matters, please connect with our office. Um, you know, our goal is to work with the community. I just wanna say, um, Jessica and Brenda, you know, for, I've been uh, with News for seven years now and for, Five of those years, I've been in contact with several offices trying to get this um, parking lot uh, to be taken into consideration and cleaned up, um, especially in the past couple of years. So the fact that you just got it in December is just a testament to the kind of work that you took action with in just a few years. So um, you, you, answered my emails, yeah. took my calls, and you took action. So we really appreciate your end of Whoever has background sound and music and talking going on, can you please mute yourself? I would appreciate it. Thank you. We're going to go in and take another call. I have Scott Mandel. Can you unmute yourself, Scott? Uh, hi there. My question, uh, uh, I believe if I heard you correctly, you say the the uh, trash bins are serviced on Mondays. I was there yesterday. The two blue bins and about five or six smaller barrels are completely filled, overflowing, and there's trash everywhere. I spoke with some people inside the lot, and they don't know when the blue bins have ever been emptied. And they were telling me that they're also filled with human waste. So if someone told you they picked it up on Monday, uh, that's not true. I have a video from yesterday. Maybe um, Lisa would like to share it with you. She can email it to you. The whole um, board has it. So that's all I got. Thanks. That would be great, Scott. Go ahead and email it to me and I'll go ahead and forward it to the girls. Yes. And, you know, Public Works mentioned to us that they're going to have a log every time they go down there on Mondays and when they service the portal bodies. So I really appreciate this feedback so I can be um, you know, in communication with DPW and ensure that this is happening and they are going out there every Monday. Um, and thank you for that feedback. I will loop back with them, connect with them and check in on what happened with that. Jessica, you might wanna uh, maybe on Monday, if you have the time just to kind of drive by, maybe coordinate with um, sanitation to find out when they're going to be there, just so you can have your eyes out there as well for them to be accountable, knowing that you're going to be coming to um, follow up with them. Uh, one more question, um, Krista. Hi, uh, I'm Krista Michaels. I'm president of the Coenca Pass Property Owners Association. And of course, this uh, park and ride lot is, uh, while, in, while in the Studio City jurisdiction, certainly 
uh, has had some uh, effect on our community as well. One of the things that I know we've learned over the past um, uh, months and years of dealing with, with homeless encampments is that the people in those encampments form a community. They rely on each other. Um, they talk about the communal kitchen, cooking together, uh, doing things together. Uh, they feel safe together. Will there be any attempt to try to keep this small community together? I know that it sounds kind of uh, silly when you think about homeless people, but um, they do rely on each other and begin to trust and lean on each other. And that does form a kind of community. And they seem much more um, receptive to moving and accepting some kind of shelter or other location if they can be moved together. Is there any attempt or thoughts about being able to do that? First of all, it's not a silly question. Thank you for that, Krista, and uh, for bringing it up. Um, Brenda, Jessica, did you want to answer that? Yes, thank you, Krista. And yes, you are correct. Uh, we have also found out through outreach that when in each encampment, there's always a leader. And when they engage with the leader and the leader accepts housing, then the rest of the individuals accept housing as well. Uh, due to the shortage of housing, um, I'm not 100% sure if that's possible, if they can all move in together, uh, but I'm sure that the outreach workers and, and um, LA Family Housing and, and LAS are going to give me an update regarding on how they provide updates and they are pending to give me another one of how uh, the engagement is going in this lot. Um, so I will ask this question to them, uh, but I, as we all know, housing is, you know, we have a shortage in housing, so I'm not too sure if that would be possible 100%, um, unfortunately, but you know, that is a great question. Thank you. And I will ask Los and LA Family Housing to see how they're coordinating housing for the individuals. Thank you. So we only have a couple of minutes and we're gonna have to keep the questions really, really super short, okay? Stephen Metz, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Hi, I just wanted to um, give some support for our stop signs on uh, Landale. Um, I know that they, there were stop signs, they were removed for whatever reason, but um, the stop signs between, uh, it's on Landale between Laurel Canyon and Colfax. And I'm not sure if you guys are aware that they were removed. Uh, so Steve, it's we, being handled by the transportation oh, committee. You got the wrong committee. Okay. Um, okay. Let me go ahead and answer that. Stephen, that question would need to be proposed to the transportation committee. Yeah. This is the land yeah. committee. And it's so so we're discussing the park and ride bond. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, Stephen, just just to let you know, Steve, that that would be a uh, uh, city. We we are know, that would be either. our jurisdiction. That would be city of Los Angeles. All right. Um. Thank you, Jessica, for that. Kira, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, hi, Jessica. Um, I'm just wondering now that the Hollywood Bowl is going to be opening up. Do you think that you'll still continue to move forward with trying to have safe parking in that lot? Thank you. Uh, so as mentioned during our last meeting, um, the lot would only be 25%. The safe parking would only be 25% if it happens. I understand that Kokorian's office is still um, pending funding for, for that. Uh, so if that were to happen, it would only be 25% of the lot and not all of it because we are keeping in mind the usage of the lot for other um, other patrons such as the Hollywood Bowl. Right, okay, thank you for that. Richard, Lisa, Lisa yeah. and we have to go now, but okay. please everybody, you have our information. Uh, please feel free to contact our office for any additional questions or you can direct them to Lisa and she can call me or email them. Richard, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to email me your question. And it is really short today. It looks like there's two communities in that lot. Oh, parked along Ventura Boulevard, you have motorhomes and vans, park at the back, you've got tents. It's like two communities, not one. Right. Duly noted. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Jessica. We're going to have to say goodbye to you. Um, thank you again for that update. Appreciate it. Um, we'll see how this all plays out once Hollywood Bowl has announced their lineup and it is going to be up and running. So we will see how this will all come together. Um, there'll, there'll be, I'm sure there'll be more updates to come and we'll be in communication, Lisa. Um, perfect. You know, you have my cell number and Brenda also. Um, right. You can connect with us directly. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Have a good okay. day. Good night. Bye-bye. Okay. So anybody else who has questions about the park and ride for Sheila Keel's office, um, you can email them to me, uh, lkaragian at studiocitync.org, and I will forward them to uh, the office itself. Okay, so uh, moving on, I'm gonna flip flop a little bit. So uh, for my announcement, um, I have the update on the historic nomination of Weddington Golf and Tennis. The meeting um, April 15th, which is tomorrow there is a link that we can provide for you. And I'm gonna have Adele unmute herself and go ahead and make the proper announcement. <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah. So um, the, uh, there was a site visit at Weddington Golf and Tennis with the com two of the commissioners. Uh, this, and then there is a staff report that came out a few, like last week. And um, in the staff report, <clears throat> they, excuse me? Go on. In the staff report, they said that Weddington Golf and Tennis exemplifies a significant contributions to the broad cultural, economic, and social history of our community as an excellent example of a 1950s private recreational facility and golf club in Studio City. <clears throat> they went on to talk about uh, the nature of the historic designa designation being to preserve the integrity of the land there. Um, tomorrow, April 15th, there will be a presentation of the staff findings to the commissioners and they will vote on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Can I go ahead and, and give them the uh, yes. planning-lacity-org. Oh. Yes. Zoom.us forward you slash. Mean, uh, yes. Do you want me to put, can I just put that as a, can I put that as a link in the chat? Is that something yeah, I can? Absolutely, yeah. Let me, let me go ahead and do that. Passcode are there too. Um, I don't know that we have chat. Feature. The chat feature is uh, disabled per oh, guide okay. done. So what you can do is if you'd like, uh, you can share your screen if you have it up on your screen. Oh, I do. Uh, as well as what we can do is we can, um, you know, we could also post it uh, to social media to our, and to our website. Oh, that would be great. Um, do you want me to share it on the screen or not? I think yeah, that would be but I, you have to, uh, you have to make me a, a co-host to do it. One second. Give me a second, please. Already Ready? done. Go yeah. ahead. Thank okay. you, Randy. <clears throat> so, on April fifteenth, they'll tomorrow there'll be a presentation. And um, we're eighth on the agenda. So, and the meeting begins at 11 and there's some, probably some lengthy stuff. So I'm, I don't think it'll be up till one, 12 or one, but if anybody wants to attend the meeting, I guess they could send me their number and I'll text you when, when uh, it's coming up. Um, you can call in and you can um, uh, go on your computer on Zoom and make your comments as you as you want as you would like to. Um, if anybody has any questions, I can answer them. But otherwise, that's what it is. That's the story. Can you scroll down just a little bit so the meeting ID and all yeah. that can show? If anyone wants to take a screen grab of it. 
There it is. And then I'll send it to you, Randy, and you can you can post it if people want to. Great, Allie. thank you. Colin. Does anybody have any questions or comments or want to say anything? All right, well, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, let me see if anyone has any questions. Any questions on the Harvard Westlake historic meeting tomorrow? I just have a comment. Um, it's actually, I just want to make a correction. It's not Harvard Westlake, it's the Weddington Golf and Tennis. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Thank you for correcting me. That was bad. Is there also in this um, agenda from the city? Oh, <laughs> I look like a creepy person, sorry. Um, on the agenda in the calendar with the city, it, isn't there a way that you can submit a written comment as well? Um, I think you would have to do it for before today, you would have to have done it because it goes into the file. I mean, you can go ahead and submit a written comment if you want. Um, I don't know that it, it will uh, it will go into the file for tomorrow because okay. they had to be in. They have to be in a certain amount of time because the, all they have to all the uh, commissioners have to get all the letters before the meeting. Okay, and they don't allow things like we're doing with public comment, or do they? They do allow public comment tomorrow at the meeting. You have you everyone, anyone who wants to speak can speak and you'll have one minute. That's great. Great speak. information. Thanks. Okay. Um, thank you, Adele. So that is much done. I don't have any other um, announcements right now could possibly towards the end of the meeting. But uh, let's go ahead and move into public comments on non-agenda items. Um, go ahead and raise your hand and I'll call one by one. Barry Johnson, unmute yourself, please. Thanks. I just wanted to say to the stakeholder who was inquiring about the Landale Square stop sign, um, if he will go to the SCNC website transportation committee send me your contact information and i can send you a whole long email chain on what's happening with these stop signs it's uh too long to explain during this meeting but it is um being worked on so um if that person's still here um please do that thank you yes Stephen met is his and he is still here. So I hope he heard. I'm sure he did. Thank you for that, Barry. Anyone else? Public comment? No. Okay. Moving to number six, presentation, discussion, and possible motion. The proposed project is the demolition of an existing commercial structure for a new multi-tenant commercial structure, including a market and retail space, including the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-site. Case number ZA-202-647-SPP-SPPA-CUB. Um, SPP specific plan project permit compliance ENV-2021 dash 648 dash EAF environmental assessment at 11265 Ventura Boulevard, Studio City, California, 91604. We have Heather Waldstein, who is the resident representative for this project. Um, Heather, if you can unmute yourself. And Hi, oh, there you are. Hi, how are you? Good, it's nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Thank you for being here. So um, I'm assuming you're going to go ahead and uh, show us some some documents that you want to share the screen with. And so that's okay. Yes. Yeah. I could have Randy make Heather a co-host, please. Um, Done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Yes, that would be great.
Can you see my screen okay? Yes, it's perfect. Okay, great. Well, good evening, Lisa and members of the Land Use Committee. I'm Heather Waldstein with Rosenheim and Associates. I'm here tonight representing Paragon Commercial Group, the applicant and property owner. We very much appreciate you taking the time to be here tonight to listen to our presentation and for being understanding and flexible with the agenda as we uh, made some further refinements on our project. We're very excited to present it to you tonight and to the community um, for a new market with new retail space. The property is located along the north side of Ventura Boulevard between Eureka and Arch Drives. Specifically at 11265 to 11325 Ventura Boulevard. Access is provided via two driveways. The westernmost driveway is a signalized controlled access at the intersection of Ventura Boulevard and Eureka Drive, while the eastern driveway, which is currently blocked by bollards, were installed by the previous owner to assist in focusing the ingress and egress through the controlled access point at the western driveway. The property is currently developed with a nearly vacant commercial building of approximately 27,000 square feet and a fully occupied multi-tenant building of approximately 6,250 square feet along the east property line. A large surface parking lot connects the two buildings and lines the Ventura Boulevard frontage. The larger commercial building was originally built in 1963 and was the location of the Market Basket grocery store. In more recent years, however, it was the location of an LA Fitness gym, which is no longer there. The project we are presenting tonight includes demolition of the larger, approximately 27,000 square foot building for the development of a new, approximately 38,000 square foot podium building, inclusive of a nationally recognized market outlined in yellow new ground floor retail outlined in green with frontage along Ventura Boulevard and direct pedestrian access to Ventura. It also includes maintaining the existing multi-tenant building along the east property line as outlined in blue. We've brought the building forward to Ventura Boulevard and placed much of the parking beneath the building and behind flanked by the ground floor retail along the, along the Ventura Boulevard frontage. The loading dock and zone outlined in purple will be in roughly the same location as was previously and buffered from Ventura Boulevard view. Vehicular access to the site will be from the two existing driveways along Ventura Boulevard. The Western driveway will continue to provide main vehicular access without use of an attendant, while the Eastern driveway will be open to allow right in and right out and provide ingress for loading. Pedestrian access from Ventura Boulevard will be provided for the new building, as well as maintaining the accessible access along the multi-tenant building and a new pedestrian access will be provided to and from the LA River at the Northwest corner of the property. <clears throat> the building's placement along Ventura Boulevard provides a street presence and activates the street frontage. An interesting challenge for the architect in designing the building was to incorporate both the step backs in height as prescribed by the specific plan and meeting the transitional height requirements. But that was done successfully and artfully accomplishing an attractive and modern design. Incorporating the prescribed height step backs from Ventura Boulevard, the building reaches its maximum height of 45 feet and steps down in height toward the north property line to meet the transitional height requirements given the uh, open space zoning of the LA River. The design is also successful in breaking up the horizontal and vertical planes, bringing the building to a more pedestrian scale. The proposed building activates the Ventura Boulevard frontage with ground floor retail spaces behind the existing 15 foot wide sidewalk with direct pedestrian entrances to each of the retail spaces and a covered outdoor seating area along the eastern corner of the building. I'd like to use this slide to walk you through the site as if you were visiting for the first time. 
Um, while a market located on the podium level or second floor may be a relatively new approach, it is a state of the art approach with a well thought out approach to the design and flow of pedestrian and vehicular traffic. Hopefully you can see enough of the slide. I don't know if the, um, the, the side panel is uh, blocking it, but one would enter with their car um, about where that orange car is located. Um, that's the Western driveway. And you would have the option of parking in the surface parking lot to the east of that driveway or continuing into the parking level within the building just to the left of the driveway. Once parked, you have two options to reach the second floor, which is through the elevator located right behind this wall here, if you can see my cursor moving, or you can take the escalator up to the second floor. Both provide direct entrances into the market. And additionally, when you're leaving the store um, and you have a cart full of items, you can take the elevator down to the parking level again with direct access. Um, alternatively, the escalator is also a cartilator, which will bring your cart down the escalator. This slide gives you a bird's eye perspective of the site. I'd like to point out that the pedestrian amenities even further enhance the existing 15 foot public sidewalk. As mentioned, there is a covered outdoor dining area with tables. In addition, there's a, an approximately 4,000 square foot pedestrian plaza with the intent of it being a great gathering area for pedestrians. Staying on this slide, I'd also like to point out the existing 15 foot wide public sidewalk, which is highlighted in green, that extends along the entire 506 foot length of the property frontage. Although not completely shown here, it does extend to the southeast corner of the property uh, in front of the existing multi-tenant building. This segment of Ventura Boulevard is identified in the Mobility 2035 plan as a pedestrian enhanced district, which encourages pedestrian activity and walking as a transportation mode. And shaded in purple is the outdoor seating area and the pedestrian plaza area. <clears throat> with the incorporation of the, I'm uh, sorry, with the incorporation of the project's pedestrian plaza, the outdoor seating area and placement of the building all along the existing 15 foot wide sidewalk, the project's providing gathering spaces, activating the Ventura Boulevard frontage and enhancing the pedestrian experience. I point these attributes out to identify the many benefits this project brings to the community. In contrast, this slide provides a view of the existing public right-of-way along the property frontage. The top photo is looking east toward the intersection of Eureka and Ventura, and the bottom photo is looking west toward the same intersection. As you may know, we are requesting a waiver of dedication and improvement as part of this project. Ventura Boulevard is designated a designated a Boulevard 2, and the current standard calls for a 110-foot right-of-way with an 80-foot wide roadway and 15-foot wide sidewalk on each side. We are being asked to achieve this standard by providing a five-foot dedication along the entire length of the property's frontage. Currently, as you can probably see in the photos, the right-of-way along the frontage has an extraordinary width and has a variable width with a variable width of 100 to 130 feet with a variable roadway width of 70 to 104 feet, which exceeds in some parts the current standards. We already have a 15 foot sidewalk along the entire length of the property's frontage. And remember this segment of Ventura Boulevard is identified as a pedestrian enhanced district. The roadway width, which is inconsistent across some portions of the frontage is required to be 80 feet. What we are seeking is to waive the five foot dedication as the city already has the right of way of approximately 24 feet in excess of the standards in some parts. And the dedication would, the dedication would not bring much benefit to the community other than widening a roadway already in excess of the standards. 
One of the reasons for requesting the waiver is the existing building along the east property line, which is currently fully occupied and will be maintained as part of this project. A five foot dedication along the frontage would encroach into the existing overhang of the building and into the existing ADA accessible walkway and ramp along the building's perimeter. Further, a five foot dedication would significantly impact the ability to provide pedestrian enhancements and potentially reduce the retail frontage and viability of the retail uses for the new building. In addition, for, in addition to our request for the waiver of dedication improvement, we are also seeking for the development of the proposed project, a project permit compliance of which the project is in compliance with the specific plan. However, we are asking for a slight adjustment to the specific plan sign requirements. Our proposed sign program seeks to provide a unified design for both the new signs on the new building, as well as updating the signs on the existing building. We are permitted and proposing one wall sign per tenant and one additional sign facing the parking lot for the new building. The specific plan also permits a wall sign area of two square feet per one linear foot of frontage. We're seeking an adjustment to increase the allowed sign area from 1,013 square feet to 1,150 square feet in order to enhance the presence of the small shops in the multi-tenant building with signage that is not only unified with the new signs, but increases their visibility from their current presence as almost invisible to those passing by. We are also proposing to reface the existing pole sign. The height and sign area, however, will remain the same. Last, we are seeking a conditional use for the offsite sales of alcohol in conjunction with the market. The hours of sales of alcohol will be consistent with the hours of operation of the market. And in addition, the alcohol um, storage as well as um, area within the store will be approximately 5% of the market's floor area space and approximately 1.5% for the storage area. Uh, there will be no on-site consumption and the store will have approximately 39 employees and at peak period times, 59 employees. That concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone may have. Okay, thank you, Heather. I'm gonna go ahead and start. So um, to be clear, you're at 113,610 square feet and you're going to 115,000 square feet. Is that how I uh, heard it? I'm sorry, I'm, what, which are, what are you talking? about the lot area or? Yes, uh-huh, the lot we're not, area. We're not increasing the lot area of the site at all. At all, okay. No. So, um, and I would like to make it clear for everyone that um, uh, that the proposed project is in full compliance with the regulations and the rules and its findings of the Ventura Coinga Boulevard corridor specific plan. So um, let's go back to the five foot waiver that you are asking for, for the dedication. Now for the um, supermarket side, which we, let's call it the West side. Um, so you're saying that that's gonna impact the storefronts that are there. I just wanna be a little bit more clear because sure. of the East side and the West side. Sure. So although, the frontage along the project site, um, the frontage on Ventura Boulevard has a variable right of way width of between 100 and 130 feet. That means from curb to curb across Ventura Boulevard from the curb in front of our project property to the curb in front of the property on the opposite side of Ventura Boulevard, there's a variable width of 100 to 130 feet. The standard for Ventura Boulevard calls for a width of 110 feet. So already portions, um, oh, is my video not on? Oh, sorry. Already um, portions of the frontage along Ventura Boulevard 
um, are far in excess of what the standard requires. However, the city would be asking us to dedicate an additional five feet on top of what's already designated um, in order to further widen the roadway. The 15 foot sidewalk already exists, so they don't need to widen the sidewalk at all. It'll just be for the roadway. Mm -hmm. um, the Porsche, there's a portion of um, the project frontage along Ventura Boulevard along the western side, as you were pointing out, that would require that additional, well, actually the five feet is across the entire site. So the five feet in front of the new building would impact the retail, um, the design of the frontage, the um, provision of the pedestrian enhancements, the plaza, the seating area. Um, we don't know to what extent, but it will impact that. And then likewise, on the east side of the property where the existing building is, it will also significantly impact that building by encroaching into the building's overhang and into the ADA accessible ramp and walkway. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh -huh. So um, looking at your retail space, at this current time, there's only um, retail storefronts of two or three? There, there's three, um, let's see, sorry, I'm just trying to yeah, if you get could go back, back to a better picture. <laughs> there's, three, there's three tenant spaces within uh, approximately 1,578 square feet. But of course, those could be, um, you know, arranged, you know, if someone needed more space, they could take up two, two of the retail spaces. Okay. And also to be clear, this is for the, the property owner, correct? The property owner is building this out. It's not for the grocer that's coming in. Correct. Paragon Commercial Group is the property owner and the market would be a tenant. Right. And is the market already signed and ready to go with the lease? Yes. yes. Okay. And when do we get to find out who the grocer is? I believe when they have moved in. Uh, the um, property owner is in attendance at this meeting, so they could probably answer a little bit better, but that's my understanding. Hi, Lisa. Todd Huber with Paragon Commercial Group, uh, the property owner. Uh, thank oh. you guys for having us. I was going sure. to, going to chime in, but Heather did such a great job that I let her keep rolling. Um, right. We, uh, as, as you probably know, as you mentioned, we're under strict confidentiality. Um, and and um, as soon as we can release it to you guys, we, we will. We, we'd love to, but, but we're under a strict confidentiality right now. So we'll keep you updated as, as the tenant allows um, for us to uh, release that. But a strong national grocer, um, great tenant. I uh, think the community and the uh, neighborhood surrounding the area will be really excited. And we're here for any other questions. All right, great. So um, <clears throat> have you been in touch with DOT uh, to re-engineer and reconfigure this intersection at all? Has there been conversations around <laughs> that? Sorry. So this intersection needs a lot of work. There needs to be um, consideration in re-engineering the intersection to be able to have the um, <coughs> put in uh, where they need to be um, designated left turn lights, right turn lights, um, making sure that everything and your your request your plans show two driveways because at this current time there's only one driveway <coughs> yes there this are well at the intersection oh there's one driveway at you're talking about the signalized intersection correct so there's one driveway there but then i'm going to go back to the site plan um there are two existing driveways actually let me go back to the aerial um Sorry, there's a little bit of animation on here. So uh, there are two existing driveways. This is the Western driveway that has the signal in the intersection with Eureka. That's right. 
and there's a parking attendant or, or a little booth there. This Eastern driveway is in existence. However, it has bollards that were placed by the previous owner in order to direct the traffic or direct focus the ingress and egress through this Western driveway. So there's always been the two driveways and mm -hmm. our proposed uh, site plan will keep both driveways open. So we will remove the bollards from the Eastern driveway providing additional access. Okay. But this one will not be controlled. Neither of them will be controlled uh, by an attendant and this Eastern driveway will not be um, signalized. Just this dr driveway will continue to be signalized. Right. So back to my original question, have sure. you with DOT to start talking about um, the signals and the lighting and the lights, the crosswalks, uh, traffic assessment and so forth? Well, they will, re they, will they have um, reviewed our plans and okay. a tra traffic assessment has been prepared for the project and any conditions um, that they see that relate to the project, they will provide um, in our determination. Okay, so they haven't yet. No, they have not provided any conditions. I don't believe though that um, changing the signal would be um, a condition that they would place on this project. Um, although I, I can't say for sure, um, but it's not something, there's no impact identified in the traffic assessment that would require such a condition. Okay, well then I'll go ahead and have a conversation with them because of the re-engineering that I would like to request for that intersection because it is a, a, just a mess right there uh, with non-existent crosswalks and lights and um, just, it, it's a mess. So um, I'll go ahead and and follow up with that, with DOT on that. Uh, and we also have um, the chair of the transportation committee here. So I'll go ahead and uh, include him in a little bit. Um, so let's go, let's go to the design of this building right here. Um, are there plans to upgrade the 6,250 foot, um, on the east side of storefronts that are attached or within this shopping center. So, so um, yeah, I'm just gonna go to the slide that has the sign. So at this point, the plan is to start with updating the signage to provide better visibility for these tenants. There's four tenants, one wraps the corner, which is Verizon. So they will each get new signage um, as well as the sign along Ventura Boulevard. Um, this proposed project permit compliance does not include any exterior renovations of this building. Right, but I would like to request for that to happen. So that would be one of my conditions that I will go ahead and propose for um, the support of this project because I would like to see a cohesive look and feel to the entire shopping center and not just keep a main focus on the building that's going to be constructed. So um, that would be one of my conditions. So in, in regard to the environmental um, type of- Can we said before we, sorry, I was on mute. Before we move on, that, that is the plan for, for Paragon from the landlord side is to make it all look like one center. Um, we're, we're not gonna have the existing shop building with white paint next to the gray and green shopping uh, anchor building. It's all one cohesive center. So that, that's in the works. We were just going to process that separately. Okay, separately as in well, it, it, just it was, on your own? Yeah. Okay. But, but when the, the grocer anchors, the, when the grocer opens, they will look like one cohesive center. So we understand. Okay. Um, so the environmental review uh, and its findings, I'd like to know like the potential impact that, that the construction of 
this supermarket is going to have? Do, do you have any type of environmental reports? Um, because it's definitely going to have um, uh, an impact on the property and its surrounding neighborhoods. Um, it's all residential across the street and up, up in the hills and behind the river. Um, so has there been an environmental review along with uh, what you've been doing? Sure, so um, we did prepare a tra transportation assessment that was submitted to DOT uh, for review and we've received an assessment from them. Okay, so perfect. Approval. We've also prepared, the project is categorically exempt from CEQA under class 32, which allows mm -hmm. for infill development on lots or properties of five acres in size or less that are not um, seeking zone change that are consistent with the code and the specific plan, as you mentioned earlier. So this project has, um, with the findings that we need to make for a for the class 32 categorical exemption. We've studied both the traffic, um, as I mentioned, as well as noise and air quality and the impacts. As long as there are no impacts to traffic, noise, or air quality, we are categorically exempt. And there, um, both, all three reports have shown that there are no impacts. Okay, I understand that, um, that there is no impact and that you're exempt, but at the same time, you do have to take into consideration the surrounding neighborhoods. And when construction starts, large trucks will be moving in, dirt will be dug up, and you need to have a sort of plan as to how these trucks are gonna be coming in, when they're gonna be driving out, all the noise that's gonna be created, and um, just, you know, for the neighbors to just be ready for a kind of schedule that you're gonna be posting uh, that everyone's gonna be abiding by. Sure, there will be a hall route that will be prepared and presented to building and safety for review. And that will detail, you know, number of trucks um, and the route that the trucks will take. Okay, perfect. So that will be provided. And, okay. and Lisa, because we're not going subterranean here and the site is fairly balanced, uh, right. there will not, it's, it, there'll be fairly minimal of any dirt taken off site. So which limits are, are obviously there's still demo and removal of the, the materials, but from a dirt standpoint, the site right. will remain fairly balanced without much dirt coming off site. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. So let's move to um, the river. So you are going to be required to have a plan to include the river into this project. So I'm just wondering what your plans are for that. Sure, we're is there required access to the river. Is there yeah. going to be like flowers, trees, making sure that it's um, it's walkable and there's access, stairways, and so forth. So yeah, let me. At that? Yeah, let me go back to the site plan okay. to show you. So because of our adjacency to the LA River and mm -hmm. part of our zoning is the river improvement overlay, That's we right. are required to meet certain um, standards uh, for, for the project site. One is providing a 10 foot landscape buffer along the adjacency to the river. Uh, we are also providing a six foot tall fence. That's also a requirement of the RIO. We're providing a pedestrian access to and from the river um, that also leads to a walkway on site to get to the existing building and then um, path of travel to the new building. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the requirements that we are providing um, through the RIO, the river improvement overlay. Okay. And it will be in compliance with that, I'm Correct. sure. Um, okay, so let's go to the design. You're asking for a 14% increase in the wall signs Correct. for the grocery store alone, right? For the no, this, so the 14% increase, um, so we're permitted in the specific plan to have one wall sign per tenant. So we have, for the new building, Correct. we have one, two, three tenants. The main or anchor tenant 
can also have an additional sign if the building faces a parking lot or additional street, which it does. So the anchor tenant will have two wall signs. Mm -hmm. We are in full compliance with the specific plan requirements for wall signs in terms of number of signs. Then in terms of wall sign area, we are permitted two square feet per one linear foot of frontage for our sign area. That would allow us to have 1,013 square feet of wall sign area. So that's the area around each of these signs, um, each of these four signs, plus the area around each of these signs, which we are proposing to increase in letter height and to relocate them so they're better, more visible. And in doing that, increasing okay. their letter height, we, we end up with a wall sign area of 1,150 square feet, which is approximately 130 square feet more than what's permitted. And a for, so we're asking for a 14% increase in the wall sign area. But in terms of all the other sign requirements, we are meeting what the specific plan. Right, meant. right, I see that. And also, so these windows that are alongside uh, of the side of the building. So you've got the escalators and then you've got, that's right. So is it gonna be that dark gray color and are those windows going to be visible from inside and out? Will um, we be to see out from those windows? Is sun coming in through those windows? Yeah, let me go back. This is an elevation that the, um, the sign company prepared to, sh to really focus on the signs. So I think it's better to take a look at the um, elevations or renderings provided by the architect. Yes, that would be <laughs> because I was like, this looks so different. Why is this not matching what I've been seeing? So yeah, so this is um, this would be a better representation of what the building would look like. Mm -hmm. And these windows here, and Todd, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but these windows are located near the checkout area. And so I don't believe you would be able to look in or out of these windows. The, uh, the checkout area is the, the windows above the, the shop buildings, Heather. Um, the, oh, so okay. Sorry. You won't be able to see in because you'd be looking at, at, at grocery fixtures, but there should be sunlight coming in uh, and, and working with this tenant. They've, they've and, and we've been working to add as much natural light into this building as possible. So those windows will provide natural light and kind of enhance that shopping experience as you, you walk through, but you won't be seeing the back of a fixture or anything that might be unsightly. Okay, and so those windows, you'll have some sunlight coming in. And what about those, where your cursor is, Heather? Yep, you'll those... have sunlight coming in there. Okay, so they are glass. They are glass. They're, I think they're, I mean, I, I, I can fully check. I think they are obscured. So like I said, you're not seeing anything that other than than uh, the natural light that's coming in is it in, in okay the just here. wanted to make sure that it wasn't just solid wall and what about the back have we taken the back into consideration of what's like going to be facing out to the river and the buildings that are behind it across so the rear elevation would be um the back of house operations and um on the first level would be the you know, uh, covered parking, as well as the loading dock. Okay. Which is all, um, you know, uh, um, shielded by the wall. So we don't have uh, renderings and pictures of those? Oh, yes, I do. I can um, pull that up for you. Okay. Um, I have so what extra... I'm doing right now too, Heather, is just like a sparse, like few trees going on. Is this going to be more uh, landscape than it looks in your rendering or yeah. is, is yeah, the, really yeah the rendering isn't um, the best representation of landscaping because it's really meant to focus on the building itself so the renders tend to you know scale down the landscaping if I go back to the site plan it shows a little bit more um, in terms of landscaping we do have the landscape oh. buffer along the front of uh, Ventura mm -hmm. Boulevard as well as providing the required amount of trees throughout the parking lot for shade. And then some, you know, landscaping features up here 
Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the landscape buffer along the north property line and east property line. Lots of trees, lots of greenery is very much appreciated. So back to the back rear uh, elevation of the building. Okay, yeah, let me just run through these yeah. slides. Oops, there we go. So this is what you would see from the back. You have an existing wall right here. And this, um, this buffers the loading, loading area. Then you have um, you know, back of house operations um, up here that you would see in this, this wall. And on the first level, although I'm not sure how much of this will be seen is the parking on the first level. So there are parking spaces along the back and then there's an elevator and then you can walk around to the escalator. Correct. Okay. And the loading dock, um, you know, the trucks come in over here and then they're coming down um, mm -hmm. below grade. So mm -hmm. those won't be visible and then they'll be behind this wall here. Mm -hmm. And hopefully there will be a scheduled time for uh, those trucks, hopefully after 7 a.m. for delivery because the sound from this parking lot balances into the hillside and across the river to all those buildings and homes that are right across from there. So nothing can happen before 6 a.m. in terms of delivery or 7 a.m. rather. Um, Okay, so I think I am good with my questions. Full line of liquor, uh, alcoholic beverages, um, and your hours of operation that you're asking for is 6 a.m. to 2 a.m., is that correct? correct? Okay. Um, all right, so what I am going to do now is, is there anything else that you wanted to add? I know I have a couple of more questions, but I, I think I've exhausted myself. So I'm gonna turn it over to the committee and for stakeholders to ask their questions. Okay. So please raise your hands. Adele Slaughter, unmute yourself and Ask your question, please. Can we just get rid of the screen? So, oh, sure. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. Is that better? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to figure out where, where I want to begin. So, you are asking for an increase in 27,000 square feet to 38,000 square feet. And so the building that is there is 27,000 square feet and it's gonna be increased to 38,000 square feet. Is that correct? Correct. And that includes both the market, the ground floor retail, as well as the loading dock, which is also counted towards the floor area. Okay. And you're moving the building. I just said, you're moving the building from where it was at the back of the property and now you're moving it to the front, front of the property. Correct. Well, we're, yeah, we're not actually moving the building. We're demolishing the existing building and rebuilding, but um, in terms of locating it on the site, it'll be up towards Ventura Boulevard. And you want to have an exception so that the building wouldn't have to be set back another five feet. Well, um, it's not an we're asking for is an exception, yeah. right? Uh, not an exception from the specific plan. What we're asking for is a waiver of the dedication that would normally be required, which is a five foot dedication along the right of way. Um, and so just uh, my inclination is to not give you that and ask you to put more trees and grass there because Quite frankly, the design is not attractive to me. It looks like a 1960s factory building. It's just a big box. And so I would like to see more sort of a, like if you had to have a setback to have a more green space 
more trees, more uh, just softer, soften it because it's quite harsh um, looking to me. Um, and also I'm thinking if you would, uh, if the, you would talk to the developer to think about solar panels on that roof, which the, I mean, the whole thing's going to be a huge heat island, which it probably the other building already is the same. Um, uh, so that's another thought that I had. And, um, I, I think I know that curve is quite dangerous. Um, and having two driveways seems very dangerous to me because when people, they go too fast along that curve and they don't see people coming out and if people are coming out with no traffic light at all. And the second one is, it could be, I don't know. I mean, you'd probably only be able to make a right, is it a, a, a right turn there out of there because right. any left turn would be incredibly dangerous. Um, so I, I think that some of that, I think you have to think a lot very hard about that area. It's, it's, there's so much going on there and Eureka, when you come out, you have to go down a little weird thing to merge on to, to um, you know, and people do crazy stuff there. Like they make U-turns and there's just so much there that's dangerous that um, I think that, uh, I, I, I do think I would be interested to see the uh, DOT report. Um, um, and the signage idea getting more, that does seem like a good idea because you can't see anything from, uh, from the street at all. But um, I, I, you know, right now, just and I'll finish with this is right now, um, we saw these beautiful plans for Sportsman's Lodge and what ended up, what, what is there now? I mean, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that it'll be better looking than it is, but what's ending up there now is very similar to your design. And um, I'm having a lot of question about developers developing so close to the street so that, and without green way with, it doesn't feel friendly. It doesn't feel like it's gonna be a, a friendly walking space to me. So those are some of my uh, initial thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Adele. Um, just to answer uh, to one of your concerns, um, one of the reasons that we're encouraging uh, developers, new developers who are coming in to build closer to the sidewalk um, is so that we just don't have a parking lot facing the streets. And we wanna be able to make it more inclusive to include uh, walkability and, and people just walking up and down and making sure that like we incorporate all of that in. So um, the one thing that we made a mistake with with the Ralphs at the corner of Vineland and Ventura Boulevard was that we did do that. We did bring it to the street, but then we made the mistake of not asking them to have the storefronts with their doors on the sidewalk to have that kind of mobility, right? So now you actually have to go into the parking lot and all their storefronts face into the parking lot. So it made no sense. So um, just wanted to make sure that you got that piece of information. Uh, Heather, I, do you want to answer to any of that? Yeah, can I clarify a couple items too? Yeah, of um, Yeah, just, um, Stemming off of what you're talking about being closer to the boulevard, this specific plan um, actually requires the buildings to be located closer to the boulevard. And in fact, um, in order to be set back from Ventura Boulevard, we would have had to ask for an exception to the specific plan. Um, in certain areas along Ventura Boulevard, you're only permitted a 10 foot setback from Ventura Boulevard. Um, and you're, re you're required to provide 18 inches, but to provide more than that, um, the specific plan um, does not particularly wanna see that. They wanna see the buildings brought up to Ventura Boulevard. Um, another note I just wanted to make is the five foot dedication. I think Adele, you mentioned you'd rather see uh, more green um, the five foot dedication would go towards the roadway, widening the roadway and mm -hmm. would not 
afford us to provide additional green space. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to make that clarification. Because it's going from one side, north to south, south to north, right? So it's the, the square footage of, or the feet rather, I should say, from. Well, right, and it's taking, it's taking from the property. The city is taking five feet off of the property to add it to the right of way, the roadway. Um, so that, that property wouldn't be part of the site anymore in order for us to provide additional landscaping. So it's not a matter of providing more landscaping if we do provide the five foot dedication, it's really going towards the roadway and widening the roadway. Right, so was this a conversation with the city or was this something that was like in code that you read? Does that make sense? Like, did uh, they say you have to um, widen the street by five feet? Or, well, um, each you know each project is different. Um, we we submit a request to Bureau of Engineering, um, right. letting them know that we're proposing a development, and they tell us whether or not we are um, the roadway in front of our site is fully dedicated or not. If it's not fully dedicated, then they request however many feet of dedication. And sometimes that dedication will go towards widening the sidewalk if it's not at its full width per the 2035 plan. Um, in other cases, it will go towards road, uh, widening the roadway. In our case, the sidewalk is already fully dedicated right. um, with a 15 foot width. So it's our understanding that that five foot of dedication would go towards widening the roadway. Right, okay. I think this needs a little bit more research and looking into. Um, but I wanted to find out what, like, is the plan? Because the intersection is the main driveway, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. um, and the so intersection, the intersection for me, um, especially for the blind or the deaf and lights and sounds and beeping with signals, people making left turns into the driveway, therefore the intersection. The intersection and where the driveway is located is actually um, in the widest part of the right-of-way, already in excess of what the city would require. Mm -hmm. So there wouldn't be much change to the intersection with the five foot dedication, it would it would most likely stay the same. So my concern is the signals. Let me get Barry on right now. Can you unmute yourself, Barry, and help me out with these signals and what it's gonna take to make- them? Yeah, and, and can Heather put up the aerial, present day aerial that shows the two driveways again? Uh, sure. And, and while let me share my screen. While again. we're waiting for that, I just wanted to say to Todd, I think you owe the stakeholders of Studio City the name of this market, because if it's Sprouts versus um, Amazon, they're two very different kinds of businesses. I believe they would um, have different crowds at different times of the day, and I think this being the largest tenant, it makes it very difficult for stakeholders, our land use committee, and ultimately our board to um, pass judgment on this. I really think you owe us that name. Um, but now that we have that map up, I just wanna um, show you, this was a market called Market Basket built in the early 60s. And if you look at the bottom of the, the map of, uh, uh, of this picture of Ventura Boulevard, Ventura Boulevard actually used to be a much bigger curb curve here. And those islands, that, the two islands that you see on either side of Eureka, that was part of Ventura Boulevard. Those islands didn't exist. And the traffic went all the way to the bottom on the picture 
without those islands. And when Market Basket was built, they softened the curve on the north side by cutting. So the, the, the dedication, you know, five, they've already done it there, you know, because on the south side of Ventura jutted out into the sidewalk, jutted out, you know, more than it does now. And I, I hope you understand what I'm describing. But again, those islands were part of Ventura Boulevard, which ran closer to Eureka and the, shop, the shopping centers, like where the sushi place and stuff is. So this neighborhood council has always been against losing any width of its sidewalk. And we would certainly not want to lose any of the 15 feet. But, you know, like I'm saying, there's just no reason to widen Ventura here. It was already widened in the early 60s when they softened this curve and put in the island for the part of Ventura that was no longer needed for the main part of the boulevard. So I don't know how many of you knew this, but I do. So I, I wanted to pass that along. Um, and just the a couple other things I was going to mention. Um, you mentioned the t outdoor tables. I only see three umbrellas. So that's maybe three tables. That's well and fine, but it's not like it's exactly going to seat a lot of people out there. And on, also on this picture, originally when this was built, there was a third driveway on the, on the left-hand side corner for Ventura too, but obviously that can no longer be there because um, the building will go right to that. Um, and, oh, in the, at the top, right by the um, LA River, you can see there are existing trees. I, and I believe at least one is a protected oak tree. Um, are those trees um, right next to the river, um, just above your red line? Are they staying? I mean, it's still, I, I, I went and looked at it the other day. That's still your property. Um, so I'm really curious because I think it's, um, it's an oak. Anyway, I, that's about it. But I really wanted to point out the fact that Ventura has already been widened there and, and why those islands are there. And I certainly wouldn't want it any wider than it already is. Thanks. Great, thank you. Um, let's go to Lana and we'll go to Peter and then we'll go to Richard. Go ahead, Lana, unmute yourself and go. Okay, great, thank you so much. Um, I, let's see, where would I like to start? Let's start with um, the information provided to us about the, the distance from curb to curb. Um, the 100 to the 130 feet that uh, Heather mentioned, which is uh, different than the standard along Ventura Boulevard. And I think that Adele and, and Barry may have been circling around this um, situation. Um, I think that that's because of the curve, uh, the curve coming in, as Adele mentioned, how dangerous that it, um, that it is there. And I think that that is probably why um, the standard distance uh, along the rest of Venture Boulevard is only 110 feet and here uh, is much wider. Um, but of course, if anyone has any different thoughts, please let me know because I'm just imagining um, that that's why, because of that dangerous curve. Um, and in the frontage of this uh, rendering, I. I see that there are the, the three different um, additional tenants that you would have uh, occupying space. Uh, was there, thank you, was there at any time consideration of that frontage to be just a part of your main anchor tenant and having some uh, greenery or cafe type style 
um, dining option along there instead of just the three that that we're showing under that little pavilion. Um, any any thoughts about that um, at one time? And then let's see what else. Um, I understand. Just to that? that, just to that, can I make a comment? Uh, just to be piggyback on what you're saying. Sure. Just because um, I too had that thought where right underneath the escalator, um, there's just like a giant row of greenery, which I appreciate. But we proposed a coffee stand for um, the two, uh, I think like two storefronts from you where there's gonna be a parking lot going in and wanted to have like a little coffee stand there. Um, and just wanted to throw that out for you too. But I like your idea with where you're going, Lynn. So go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. I just wondered if there had been any consideration or thought of that. Maybe that question would be directed to Todd. Um, is it necessary to, to have built out the additional three uh, tenant spaces there? Um, I guess uh, is what I'm asking about. And then there's probably lots more that I wanna ask, but I think I'll wrap up with the final um, question is, are your other, uh, the multi-tenant building that you have that's occupied where you have a Verizon, anchor, have they been notified or are they in the know of, of, of this development? Thank yes. You. So I'll answer the uh, first question regarding uh, the anchor uh, tenant having a presence on the street there at the first level. What makes that tough and, and not logistically um, doesn't make sense for, for them is because the grocer's full operation is on the second floor, right? Because we didn't do subterranean. We did an act grade with a podium store above it. So for them operationally to run a, a square footage at the ground floor and then have their entire store at the top floor, uh, didn't make sense, but yeah, we we did run that that kind of opportunity by them when we first started looking at this deal because we thought it would make sense. It's obviously a great location and, and would fit in with their their grocer, but just operationally, it didn't make sense. Um, in terms of the existing building, so we we I met with them in June and I met with them um, before we actually closed on the property here at the end of last year to to fill them in on on kind of the at that point it was pretty. Uh, early on in the process, but to keep them up to date on what's coming and to keep them in the know that a grocer is coming and, and unanimously across the board there, they've been uh, dealing with a, a, a drop in traffic since uh, LA Fitness left, right? And even though the parking situation has improved for them because there is more parking, generally their traffic drivers are those anchors. And so um, the feedback from them was they're, they're excited that the grocer can't get open soon enough just in terms of bringing traffic. They've obviously struggled through a, a tough year as is most shop tenants this past year, but uh, good news is that whole row, that 6,250 square foot, those tenants are all, all there and, and um, still uh, their plan is to be there long term and our plan is to have them there long term. So um, we'll certainly keep them, uh, we've kept them updated, we'll continue to keep them updated, but they're, they're very excited to have a grocer and to have a traffic driver come into the space. Right, that's really great. And I'm glad you're gonna increase the size of their signs on their building because um, they really have needed that for a long time. Um, but then just going back one more time, sorry about the three uh, uh, spaces in the front had there, so maybe there wasn't any consideration due to the design and the way the grocer uh, proceeds with their business um, to have something different, but had there been any consideration to uh, drive through, pick up uh, people that uh, order um, and have things brought to them, where would that activity take place? Is that in the back where you have your loading dock um, or, or bicycles or Uber driving in? I mean, uh, just some of those new and interesting ways that people are shopping now. Um, yeah, so I, I think on the on what's on the screen, you can see there's bicycle parking provided uh, street front along Ventura. In terms of kind of the pickup stalls, and obviously that's a that that model changes daily, right? So these grocers are ahead of the game in terms of where do we need them, where logistically does it make sense, and and as prescribed right now, and this is like I said, this changes every day. 
but the the plan is that they'll have designated stalls within the parking garage for that where i ordered i came they put it in my trunk and i'm out which is is you guys are saying is a, is a big trend now so that will be uh, a part of, of the operation of this grocery store and they have designated stalls for that uh, as okay. it says and, and finally you you feel that it um is necessary to have those three additional um storefronts. I mean, even though we're trying to build out to the curb and we have the height restrictions and the grades going back, um, you find it still necessary to have, uh, I mean, you, of course, why waste space if you can get more people in there? I think it's great for the community, but I, I just wondered if there was any other kind of um, in, ingenuity about um, assisting with some new um, a design to help the grocer with with some kind of storefront if it's just a a quick pickup or a, I don't I don't really know I'm just trying to reach out to say what you know what else might have been considered no no we you're having the same you're having the same conversations that we have every day as a developer here right so uh, no, we, we said yeah. Todd, let me let, let me take this if I can. This is Erwin Busey. I, I work with Todd at Paragon and I, I wanted to address the, the three st storefronts. Shopping centers are so, um, they, they thrive when there's a great tenant mix. And what's so exciting and nice about this project is a lot of the existing tenants that are here have been here for a very, very long time. And even the simple thing of increasing their signage to 24 inches and bringing in a, a daily needs grocery store is really going to help them prosper at this location. The tenant mix, we haven't figured out if that those three storefronts are going to be three storefronts or one tenant that is best in class. We really believe that that's important because it activates the pedestrian links um, throughout the project also activates the, the public plaza. We haven't programmed the public plaza. You can see that huge public plaza that we have there. We're gonna to continue to work on that and really create something great there, which creates a community gathering place, um, much more so than the outside seating because we want people to gather and really enjoy uh, the environment that we're creating. So. Again, I think that the, the, the little bit of shop space that we have, it's only an ad of 1,578 square feet, is very important to also act as a, uh, uh, as a gravity pull for pedestrians that are walking um, on the boulevard closer to the grocer. So I, I hope that answers your question. It's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much to both of you. Thank you, Erwin. Thank you, Todd. Thanks, Heather. Thanks. Peter Cole. Hi there. Um, I might have stepped out of the room when you mentioned who the uh, tenant was, but I believe that you're not uh, letting us know who it is. It seems odd that uh, you wouldn't want to divulge that and that you would think the tenant would want to broadcast to the community that this uh, great grocery store is coming. The only reason I can think that you, they wouldn't want to say that is because the community might not be happy about it, perhaps. Um, I live right behind Sportsman's Lodge and um, this just doesn't pass my smell test. So I really think before the land use committee puts its stamp of approval on, it'd be nice to know who the tenant is. I mean, just for example, what if uh, Donald Trump decided to open a uh, grocery store here and sell Make America Great Again broccoli? I don't think the community would be happy. But uh, I, I think I think you should step forward and say who it is. Thanks. Yeah, this is Erwin again, and uh, believe me, I wish I could, but we have a confidentiality and. That is pretty prevalent among a lot of grocery store chains. Our, our background is we specialize in grocery anchored shopping centers. And so we may we, we transact with a number of grocers from, from um, Aldi to Sprouts to Trader Joe's. And again, it's it's 
it's something that is consistent. And, and we do have an NDA and I cannot disclose who it is. So I wish I could. So quickly, that wasn't the case of the market that's going in at Sportsman's. As soon as they were locked in, we were told about it. Yeah. I hear you. I just have one here. Um, thank you, Peter. Uh, Richard Niederberg? Yes. Question. I know it's a lot of windows or things that look like windows. Um, what do your Title 28 numbers look like? Heat transfer, E value to all the windows? Yeah, that is a code requirement that we got to comply with Title 24. And, and also, so that will be part of the uh, construction drawings and electrical engineering calculations to make sure that we comply. So we, that we are obligated to comply and we will comply. I'm just wondering basically how many tons of air conditioning do you feel are required? Approximately one ton for every 400 square feet. That's right out of the book. Okay. Um, next question is um, on the on the eastern building, are you going to allow to have signage on the backs of that building facing near the shopping center? So it's not calculated so far. You're talking about the two remain shop building, Richard? Yeah, the, the, the east building, yeah, is there going to be signage on the back of it? Heather can 100% check me, but my understanding is there is not. There, there isn't now. We're not adding it. We're just upsizing and, and relocating the signs on the front. Just wondering because that would come to the calculation. Yep. The next question is that um, how much space is there from the back of the metro bus stop to your patio or whatever you that, that is? Um, I, can, I can look at the site plan and give you a number, but it's roughly about 10 to 15 feet. Okay, I just consider people uh, walking or camping behind the, uh, the, um, the metro, and I've seen that in oh. numerous occasions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Jesse? Uh, my question was regarding um, the um, what what type of bicycle and cyclist infrastructure <clears throat> was going to be included in the plan. And I know you mentioned there's going to be some exterior uh, bicycle parking. Was there any thought of additional bicycle parking that's covered, that's uh, in the vehicle parking area at all? Yes, there's. Uh, we are providing both short-term, what they call short-term and long-term bike parking. The short-term bike parking is located along the frontage, and then there's additional bike parking in the parking area, in the covered parking area. Okay, great. Um, bit of a related question uh, regarding the pedestrian access from the, uh, the river uh, space. Is that gonna be a stairway or a ramp? Has that been decided yet? Um, given, you know, given that the, the river does uh, potentially in the future provide the opportunity for you know, um, cy uh, cyclist access to be uh, part of the river's overall plan. I don't know if we have detailed plans for um, the river side of our site, but on our site, it is not a stairway. It's um, just a walkway to the to the property line, and then we're providing access um, to the river side. Oh, I see. So the the river, the uh, the sort of the walkway that exists along the river is not um, currently is not below grade of of where the uh, parking lot ends. Oh, it might be, but um, the access that I was talking about is on our project site versus it sounds like you're asking about on the uh, other side of um, the project site along the river. Right, okay. So, yeah, I mean, okay, that's-, that's I think sorry. there's a way, to, I understand. 
essentially what I think you're looking for is to make sure that bike access, when the river is improved, can get down to the river. Correct. And, and I, I think there's a way to do that. We still need to work through the, the, the uh, and nat naturally, well, our, our goal is, is to make that usable and not only usable, but also, you know, a, a benefit for the community from bicyclists and to, pr to promote non-vehicle trips, essentially, right? Because we, we, we want bicyclists to enjoy the property as well and pedestrians to use it as well. So we'll work on that, but that, you know, I appreciate you speaking up about that because that's a, that's a good comment. Thank you. Um, terrific, that's good to know that that's, uh, that that's part of the thinking moving forward. And uh, last question from me, um, do you have a total count on the number of trees that will be removed under this plan? Uh, how many will be retained and any additional that will be planted? So any trees that will be removed will be replaced, including the street trees. Um, and then of course, in addition to those being replaced, we will be providing trees, one per every four parking spaces in the uncovered surface parking lot, as well as trees along the um, 10 foot landscape buffer along Ventura Boulevard and the 10 foot landscape buffer along the North property line and Eastern property line. Okay, thank you. Um, thank can you, Justin. One, one, yes, one more question. Yes, yes, is, yes, go ahead. Is there gonna be rear access from those stores into the parking lot? And if so, is there a loading zone? There's, there's a loading zone, which is at the rear of the podium building, the market Not building. The three little stores in front. Okay, they do not have rear access into the parking area. Their access is along Ventura Boulevard. Okay, for not, for not even for loading? No. Okay, thank you. Peter, did you have another question or did you want to put your hand down? Oh, I think I've uh, <laughs> said my piece. I'll okay, see if I can you. figure out where my hand is. All right. Uh, Dean, did you have a question? Unmute yourself first. Go ahead. We can't hear you. No. Try now. No. No. Try and see if you can repair that and we'll get back to you. Barry Johnson, did you have one last question before we moved on? Yes, I, I was just gonna say, if you do a motion tonight, I would ask that you support their request for not taking the, I mean, for taking the dedication, but not acting on it because the street, as I pointed out earlier, is already as wide as it needs to be. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Anyone else have a question before we move? Before hey, can, we can move? you can you try to unmute Dean as well? It looks like he's unmuted himself, me, but yes. is there some other volume related technicality? He's, he's having trouble. The best bet uh, it would be for him to sign off and sign back on. Right. Uh, so unmute. I have unmute. Let's give it a second. It could also be his microphone. It may not even be our Zoom. Right. Let's see. Sorry, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes. What I miss? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about you. Go ahead. Um, I don't have any questions. I guess just comments um, in general. I think, you know, Lisa, you've always mentioned this area is one of your projects and you call it the lost. No, 
the forgotten end of the forgotten end and i think this will you know be one of the premier starts that will wake up the forgotten end and i'm thrilled thank you yeah and i i think to erwin's comments about the three little stores whether it be one two or three those those are exciting ads along the walkway there um you know this was a tired ownership a tired project and you know what we're getting is a premier landlord a premier ownership and you know a substantial investment in the community yeah everyone has some great ideas and comments and, and all but i think what they're asking for is you know it is a buy right project that's nominal and i agree with barry um, on that dedication. Um, I think to Adele's comment on, on the box and, and maybe Todd and um, Erwin, the three windows that are on the east facing side of the building, the three sections. The um, walls of windows you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, perhaps, I know in the front, there's a little eyebrow over the front of the building, but perhaps that little white eyebrow that, that jots out, um, maybe that treatment could be uh, continued over those three sections of windows just so that whole side of the building doesn't look like the box that Adele's talking about. That's right. Just, just to soften it. I mean, you know, I don't think it's awning appropriate or we're trying to maybe see up, upgrade and contemporize away from awnings, but just something to think about you know, to Adele's comment um, on that, just that flat plane, it, it might bring some other uh, design element there. Some texture would be nice. Yeah, it's just a flat wall that the, the little eyebrows there or something above those windows, you know, three yeah. little sections, and maybe it's one continuous, whatever, but it might just bring a little element from, you know, uh, out from just looking at a straight wall some articulation. That's right. Yeah, um, but I, I think that uh, the project is, is very welcome and we're gonna get uh, a great enhancement for that entire piece of land and, and some terrific new tenants and, and great business to the existing tenants. Thank you, thank you, Dean. Uh, one last question from 561. Can you mute yourself, please? Hi, this is Ruth, um, your unhoused neighbor. And I was hi, just wondering if there was going to... Uh, hi there. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if it, there's going to be any displacements of people or animals or trees or anything over this project or is it like you were going to do an environmental impact or report or something that would address that? Uh, yes, they are. They're going to do an environmental impact report? The uh, project is categorically exempt and we still still in other words, we're complying with a specific plan that's in place. Oh, so there was, I just like, wondered if there's displacement. No, there are currently no residents on the site, so there will be no displacement of any people or animals. Any trees that will be removed will be replaced. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Um, okay, so. I think that covers everyone. Uh, I just want to say, um, as chair, um, that I am thrilled about this project, uh, with the exception of some minor tweaks. So, uh, as everyone knows, especially my committee, I do talk about the forgotten end of Ventura Boulevard between Lancashire and Carpenter Avenue that does not have the bid behind it um, in desperate need of an anchor 
um, storefront um, developer coming in to really uh, make everyone stand up straight and take a look at their own properties and um, hopefully it will incentivize in a way where uh, everyone will pay attention. And this looks like it will. I am just so excited about it. Um, like I said, with the exception of some design flaws, it does need to be a little bit softer. There is a project that we did uh, to Todd and Irwin and Heather. There is um, an apartment building that we did approve last year or two years ago with this committee. I think it was right when we started back in June of 19, um, June, July. And their textures and their design elements were very flattering. So um, they're going right next to the Marshalls building where the assisted living facility, the retirement home used to be. It is fenced in now, uh, but I can get you some of their renderings and files so that you can take a look at um, the design that we did support. Um, I'm, I'm fine with a lot of it. I think that you need to just soften some edges um, to really incorporate the neighborhood. So the stakeholders who live directly across and behind were used to the walkability of getting up, getting dressed, walking over to the gym, right? So we, those folks are missing that aspect of getting up getting out, walking down the hill, across the river, and being part of something. Um, so I would really appreciate if those three tables with the umbrellas that are outside were, um, were just kind of reconsidered to add a few more. Uh, bicycle stands definitely need to be uh, visible for people to feel comfortable to ride their bikes over. Um, I would really encourage the placement of uh, the cute Adele, maybe you can throw the name out for me, of the, the coffee stand that we have over the west of Coldwater Canyon where the Iroha Sushi parking is. It's called it's Windows. Windows. It's called Windows. Is it Red Windows? Red, red Windows. Window, right? red, red, yeah, window. Red Window. Right. Red Window. Yeah. Red Window. Okay. So teamwork. Um, so if we could consider something like that, it doesn't have to be red window, but it could be, you know, your own version of it, or it could be like a, a green juice stand. It doesn't have to be pressed juicery, but it could be your own version of it. Um, just something that will get people out and walking instead of just driving and getting out of their car, going up to the supermarket shopping, but like, you know, incorporating some like seating elements, uh, maybe some benches, um, you know, some tables and so forth. So having said all that, trees are of great importance to us. Um, the sidewalks, especially, uh, I just don't want to see just like some, you know, three uh, retail stores without any planters or some kind of greenery that is attractive to the building. Again, soften, soften, soften. My next concern would be the second driveway uh, where the Verizon building is. That is closed for a reason. Um, there, I, I highly suggest for you to drive up and down that part of the boulevard from Vineland, from the Marshalls, um, and try and see if you can come to a slow stop. It's very close to the driveway where the loading dock is to the home goods. That is going to cause a major, major problem for you. So I would definitely take the time to um, do an assessment um, make sure that you drive it several times. I'm sure DOT is going to come out and do their uh, assessment of that driveway. It is very, very dangerous. Mark my words. 
that area is very, very dangerous. We have curbs. I've been working on getting some signs to slow traffic down, but the only light between your driveway and Vineland is one light at the Marshall's intersection. So people gain a lot of, of speed once they leave the Vineland light and intersection heading west towards your supermarket. By the time people come to a stop to pull into a driveway is going to be very dangerous. I'm, I'm, I, I'm stressing this and I can't stress it enough. You have to pay close attention to that. There will be many, many accidents and I hope no fatalities. Um, having said that, I would, you did say that you did want to upgrade the storefronts that are existing there, the UPS store, the Verizon, the restaurant and the pokey shop. Um, I highly encourage that as well as a very friendly walkable ramp stairwell whatnot with a lot of greenery um, and to the river. Um, Sportsman's Lodge did this well with their renderings. Um, if you'd like, I can get that to you too. Uh, might wanna consider taking a look at that, their design and incorporating that because yours lies a little flat. Um, I'm not excited about your hours of 6 a.m. to 10, 2 a.m. I would like to decrease that to midnight. Uh, I think that's fair and satisfactory to this side of the boulevard. Um, I think aside from that, I am going to propose uh, a motion. So here we go. And uh, in, by no means, this is concrete. Uh, I would like to add Jesse's uh, thoughts of what he had to say a little while ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my motion out there and then you guys just like write down your notes and we'll incorporate it, okay? Here we go. The Land Use Committee of the Studio City Neighborhood Council supports the demolition of the existing 27,964 square feet of commercial building and maintain the existing 6,250 square foot commercial building with upgrades and the cohesive consideration with the new building. Um, reconfigure, reconfigure, excuse me, the existing surface parking lot with site access from two different driveways um, located in the intersection of Eureka and Ventura Boulevard and to the east of the driveway and construct a new 38,657 square foot podium style building to include a market of 37,000 79 square feet with ground floor retail space of 1,578 square feet. This proposed project is located at 11265-11325 Ventura Boulevard, Studio City, California 91604, C2-1V- excuse me, 1VL dash Rio zone within the river improvement overlay district. Further, the Studio City Land Use Committee supports the conditional use permit ZA dash 2021 dash 647 dash SPP dash SPPA dash CUV to allow the sale of a full line of alcoholic beverages for offsite cons consumption in conjunction with the operation of a 37,079 square foot market with the hours of 6 a.m. to midnight, 
12 a.m. And the approval of the project permit compliance findings pursuant to LAMC section 11.5.7C to allow the proposed project within the geographic boundaries of the Ventura Kalanga Boulevard corridor specific plan. We also support and approve the project permit adjustment to allow the 14% increase of a 1,150 foot square foot wall sign area to be permitted. The Land Use Committee of, Stu of the Studio City Neighborhood Council um, supports the requested waiver of dedication and improvement. Um, I, I think I need to rewrite that. Uh, committee to weigh the five what, dedication and improvements along the Ventura Boulevard as required. So we will oppose the requirement and are in favor of the applicant um, for the waiver of the dedication. I'm going to rework that, but you get my my idea here. So, uh, Lana, notes? Well, I just had a little um, yeah. idea come up when y'all were talking about the opportunity for the three possible tenants in the frontage. I thought of an, a, another sort of comparative sort of walk up inviting sort of thing. Um, yeah. Uh, the sprinkles cupcakes, you know, like they have. Oh yeah, how cute. Yeah, that because that's a you know you're used to that now. When you go to the Grove, you know you can just walk out, get a cupcake, and go, and um, that's kind of street friendly. Yes, I agree, and I'm sure oh. Todd, Erwin, and Heather are making a note of it. Yep, that's a great idea. Excellent. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, any notes to my motion. Richard, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, okay. Um, project sounds okay. It sounds yeah. to me the way the, the uh, paint is in the parking area, somebody in a wheelchair or a walker can easily be hit because that's crossing a major driveway. So I'm a little concerned with the, with the paint scheme of having that walkway just painted on without any bollards or anything else to protect anybody going down the walkway in the middle of the parking lot. The other thing we think would be, it'd be nice if we could uh, have their liquor sales be stop at midnight or so. That's right. Um, did you all make a note of that, Heather, Erwin, Todd? Of yes, we're, we're, we're making a lot of notes. So we appreciate the feedback and we'll we 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 great suggestions. Great, Jesse. Do you have uh, yeah yeah you know it's it's a nice uh, nice long motion and thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Now I just you know make sure uh, all the verbs are consistent and agree with each other. It's the it's, I I just kind of lost the I lost the thread there for a second. I'm sorry, but That's I okay. just try, I have to get as much of the information in as possible. Um, but I will rework the verbiage. Um, I mean, this is me, you know, working on this as, as we're like meeting. So um, right. by the time it goes to the board next Wednesday, I Correct. will have cleaned it up and, um, and it will sound a lot more fluid. <clears throat> And you'll have your links there to complement everything. Right. Thank you. Lisa, yeah, I have a good. question. It, Thank you, Jesse. The, the hours that you mentioned till 12 o'clock, is that just liquor or the entire facility closes at midnight? The entire facility. The, the, the market. Does the market close at 12 or just liquor sales are stopping at midnight? Well, I mean, I think it's... It, it, they should have the ability to stay open until midnight should they want. But I, I, with the way this area shuts down at 10 p.m., I doubt they'll go past 
11, if at all. How long is the Ralph open on, on Vineland? Isn't that two? 24 hours. Yeah, 24 hours, okay. Um, I think my, my opinion would be that the uh, closing time of the store should be consistent with the cessation of liquor sales as well. I mean, it, you think you <clears throat> get some get some frustrated customers if they come in five minutes past when liquor is being sold, but they can they can buy a can of soup, but not a can of beer, you know. Right. So liquor and store closes at midnight. Also, loading zone time. What kind can they load? Um. 7 a.m. would be, you know, desirable. 7 a.m. or after. Dad? What is about if it's Is there any part of your deal that conflicts with that? Say that again, Richard. I didn't understand. I'm you. wondering if there's any conflict with he's dealing with a master tenant. I'm wondering, is there anything going to stop? Them saying, okay, no loading before seven, let's say, or after Top. 10 or whatever. Right. Yeah, I think, I, th I think that's, you know, we, we want to make sure that the market, especially in these times, is as competitive as possible. So, we, for example, the Ralphs, if they had loading hours of X, Y, and Z, we would like to maintain those same type of loading hours as well. Um, in terms of, there is a huge uh, investment into this property as well. And, you know, we did not ask for 24 hour operation, which is pretty typically a pretty typical standard. Um, so, you know, I, I understand uh, the comment, but I respectfully request uh, 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. Thank you. Uh, just so that you know, the Ralphs butts up against uh, a major highway and not residential on across the street where sound bounces heavily and from the river to the apartment buildings there. So we've gone through uh, a lot with stakeholders being unhappy with so much noise bouncing. Um, and, you know, this has been a very quiet, quiet side of Ventura Boulevard um, to go ahead and, and bring in a supermarket right in the middle of it, which I absolutely am thrilled about, like I said, but I can't just go ahead and give it until 2 a.m. and have loading trucks pulling in at 6 a.m. Yeah, and there's 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 definitely noise ordinances that, that we need to comply with. And also, I think the key thing is this. Paragon wants to be a great community member, and so does our rest. Uh, Barry, go in and unmute yourself. Uh, I was just going to say for the form of your motion, it would probably be better to say the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council supports and give the case number and then say with the following conditions and then ah. go one through 10 for all the different things you just, you've you mentioned. Right, 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 okay. Yeah, it's kind of like how the uh, conditional use permit is enumerated for our restaurants. Right, okay, I can do that. Thank you, Barry. Did you put in the, uh, did you put in the, um, in your list of uh, conditions uh, getting the DOT study? DOT study. Thank you for that. I wanted to, but I forgot. Um, okay. So what does everybody think about the 6 a.m. to 2 a.m.? Don't just leave it up to me. Like. Um, or uh, midnight. I, I would, I would kind of be interested in in knowing um, if there had been any market surveys about shoppers, you know, maybe in this vicinity that are, you know, what number of people would be shopping maybe in that late 
time to warrant keeping open a facility. Now, maybe there's some other kind of operations going on that we don't know about, something new and innovative uh, where they need access. Um, I, I would just be curious about, about that. I'm not necessarily a late, too late a shopper myself. So right. I don't know what, how, how it, it may be that you give them the opportunity to be till midnight and they decide, well, yeah, but at 11, nobody's coming in after 11 or, or if you give it to two, maybe nobody's coming in after one. I'm, I just don't know how to really judge that uh, um, as far as your traffic. Yeah. Oh, Seven yeah. Eleven on the next corner. Say that again, Richard? Seven Eleven is on the very next corner and they sell as late as they possibly can. You know, um, going off what Lana said, it's, it's a little, it, it is challenging to uh, fully, you know, uh, really, really understand the situation in its entirety and be able to make a, a worthwhile judgment when we don't know who the tenant is. Um, obviously, you know, Whole Foods and Trader Joe's are both extremely busy during certain parts of the day. And then they, they both close pretty consistently at, at 10, nine or 10 at the various locations near us. And that seems to work for their business model. And then Ralph's has a diff, diff, different business model. And so does Vaughn's. You know, without knowing who the tenant is, it's, it's a challenging thing to be able to um, accept the premise that the, that the business must stay open until two, you know, without any form of, you know, basis of comparison based on knowing who the tenant is. I agree. Um, I still stand with uh, what I proposed, uh, 6 a.m. to midnight. So um, having said all that, I will include the DOT study. I will rewrite it with um, the Land Use Committee of the Studio City Neighborhood Council uh, supports with the following conditions. And I will go ahead and list all the ones that I already read through with, um, with the hours of 6 a.m. to midnight and also to include the DOT study. All right, so let's go ahead and vote. Um, all in favor, in support of the motion as we read it to include. Uh, the DOT study. Raise your hand, please. Oh, I think we verbally need to, why don't I call folks' names? Go ahead. Okay, uh, Lisa? Yes. Jesse? Yes. Lana? Yes. Richard Niederberg? Yes. Dean Cutler? I'm gonna abstain. Adele Slaughter? I'm also gonna abstain. Okay. Um, we have one, two, one, two three, four, four, two abstain. Two abstain. Four, yes, uh, in support, two abstaining. Motion passes. Thank you all. Um, thank you, Heather. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Erwin. We really appreciate it. I'll go ahead and put this together and it will be on the Studio City Neighborhood Council board agenda that meets next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Thank you, Lisa and members of the committee. Yeah, thank, thank you everyone you. for your time and, and great feedback. We look forward to bringing a great project to this area. Thank you. Likewise, we really appreciate all the time you spent in the comments, the great comments. So thank you. You have a great Thank evening and uh, look forward to moving this along. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good night. Bye. Uh, Thank you all so much. Seriously, uh, you guys did great. And thank you for hanging in there. That was, it's, it's a big project. Sorry, my iPad keeps slipping. One of the uh, other issues is that when it comes to Ralph and Bronze, they're reloading the shelves. So whether they're open or closed, technically, they still have lights and noise and everything else known to man. So it doesn't really make that much difference. Right. This is, 
like they have to understand they're in such close proximity to the, I mean, she's talking about a 130 foot wide street. So add another maybe 50 feet to that is where the next house is across the street from it. So to, and then, you know, for them to just like go with, with like a parking lot that's just, that shuts down at 7 p.m. to all of a sudden go until 2 a.m. is something that I can't, I can't do and support. So and that, that be some of the delivery time frame. maybe if they wanted to have deliveries from midnight to two, even though the store isn't open, does this, uh, you know, midnight cut that off, right? They would have to have before midnight. Usually, usually these markets, they do their deliveries first thing in the morning. Um, there are homes on Fruitland that are just as close to Ralph's. Yeah. But I mean, on Fruitland though, okay. So what do you say that we should reconsider or? I, I'm just saying that Ralph's is open till 2 a.m. And there are uh, residential, both multi multifamily and single family residential as close to Ralph's as there is to um, this proposed location. So just. To, but, um, no. Uh, through but Ralph sits way back. The corner where Fruitland is, oh, okay, I, I see what you're saying. On the other side, like behind the public storage. Is yeah, as the crow flies. That's what you're saying. Yeah. But they're, but they don't have, I don't know. It's just, it, it, because their loading dock is in the back with their, with the river and all that noise being bounced off the river into, I mean, you remember Barry, the nightclub that used to be there and how people were just up in arms over the fact that it was open until 2 a.m. and the sound that would just resonate into the homes in the surrounding area. Yeah, that is true at Ralph's, and Ralph's doesn't have the river right there, but it does have apartments right next to their loading dock. But I think, um, I believe it's no unloading from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. There's a sign there. That's right. And I think that's pretty standard, isn't it? It is, yeah. A lot of places, like you said, they do mostly their mornings. And um, I think they just want to be open morning. so that they can sell liquor until two a.m. But you definitely would not want unloading from ten p.m. to seven p.m. at this um, unnamed market because there are single-family homes right across the river. You know where the Brady Bunch house is. That's right. Oh, it would be, it would just be disaster if that happened. Um, okay, let's move on. I've kept you all way too long, but thank you so much for all your input. It was just an outstanding meeting from my point of view. I hope it was from yours as well. Um, so number seven, item number seven with the presentation, discussion and possible motion, notice from the city of Los Angeles Department of Cannabis Regulation pursuant to LEMC 104.05B1. This is a notice of PCN request for retail storefront commercial cannabis activity that were transmitted to the city clerk on March 25, 2021. So, this one um, came to me uh, in from various uh, outlets, and um, I had a conversation with the gentleman who is representing the Basin Group, uh, the business location at one two nine one five Ventura Boulevard Studio City nine one six zero. 04 council file number 21-0420-S42 
uh, DCR application number LA-19-310855-2022-0010. So um, basically same as the last three that we discussed uh, last month that there will be a council file um, uh, submitted to um, oppose any new cannabis dispensaries that want to come into Studio City having met our quota uh, and reached our limit. Uh, and I did propose this to him. I did explain this to him, to the gentleman, and I invited him to come and have a say uh, on behalf of his uh, client. Um, he basically just wanted to have me do this as I explained that I did with the last go around of the three that we had. So he's just fine with it being on the, the agenda as is. So um, we are in opposition. I do wanna take a vote. So um, all opposing of this new application do you want to take roll or do you want to raise hands? You have to unmute yourself. Lana, you're I'm, muted. I see no convenience. Sorry. I think it is good to, to uh, have the audio uh, for people who are listening and not watching. Is the only reason why. Okay, so um, I'll call the names. Lisa Karajian. Uh, yes. To oppose. Jesse Porter. Yes. Lana Shackleford. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Dean Cutler. Yes. Adele Slaughter. Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. There is no necessity for for this whatsoever in Studio City. Um, comments from members on subject matters within the committee's jurisdiction. Yes, Lana. Oh, hey, um, today I was on a meeting with the housing committee. Uh, okay. There were some important issues on that agenda, two of which I will highlight. One was to increase the um, the code enforcement fee uh, almost to be doubled. Uh, this code enforcement fee is for rent stabilization, uh, where you know where renters pay a portion of this fee along with uh, the landlords. Um, there was um, some discussion. I uh, did make my comments as a uh, as as a residential renter um, and that was that was it. Uh, however, I believe that uh, the ending result was that it did pass. I, I do not think that it got to be uh, at the uh, entire fee that they were requesting. So um, this motion out of committee will go to the LA City Council and um, I, I really, in my own personal thoughts, feel like this is an ill-timed proposition as they would like to implement these charges in uh, mid-year and then in the beginning of January. Um, so that's about that information. And then there was another thing on the agenda, which was an anti-harassment, a tenant anti-harassment uh, motion, um, which uh, did pass there was a little bit of confusion but there were a lot of people that that called in um that wanted to support this um this motion so there'll be more to come this is uh strictly related to uh landlords and tenants um specifically tenants who are being harassed and forced to move uh under um uh, false documents or just continued harassment and a couple of the amendments to it are brought by a, a new council person uh, 
Ramad, I believe is, is her name. Uh, she took over for David. She took David Rue's place. And um, so one of the amendments would be that if someone prevailed in court um, in regards to housing, there would be a cash uh, buyout uh, for that tenant. And then the other one would be um, that, let me think, what was the other one? I didn't write it down. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, that mainly if they prevailed in court, there were some things that would take place. Oh, the second one would be that that um, apartment then would not be allowed to have an increase in the rent uh, for the next tenant. So this is to mitigate the, uh, the really tacky behaving uh, folks that want to push tenants out just so they can raise the rent on on apartments. Okay, so that's that was a lot. It was a long meeting. That's all I got. Great, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, really appreciate that. Anybody else? Okay. Um, Tomorrow, the, the cultural historic Weddington golf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm having a brain dead moment. Um, the Weddington golf course, a uh, cultural historic monument meeting is at 11. I uh, hope you all can join. Uh, I think Michael DeLazar has his hand up. Please unmute yourself and thank make you, Lisa. Um, I just wanted to say, just wanted to say, um, great meeting. Uh, really thank enjoyed you. it. And uh, the one thing that occurred to me, just as you were saying your last words about the proposed grocer, um, okay. the the thing that becomes interesting and important as far as the name of the grocer is that if it is Amazon, the one thing to consider is all Amazon grocers, you can return your Amazon returns to that grocer. And that is going to significantly increase both the traffic and the shipping in and out of that parking lot, which is already pretty burdened with the UPS store right there also, because those trucks come in and out several times a day to load and unload. But the, the difference between it being an Amazon and say a Sprouts is significant because you're going to see a lot more product going in and out of there. That's just something that occurred to me as you were signing off. So um, thank you for that. One of the things that I did forget to mention is that, um, so I did some investigating and I called and I asked and I, I really tried to get the name of this grocer and everyone who is involved has signed an NDA and cannot speak about it or doesn't know they just simply don't know um and I further checked into can that really happen like can they just not disclose and apparently they can it's really, really unfortunate, but they can't. They, they don't have to disclose who they are until they open. And I just can't understand for the life of me why you would want to hold on to that piece of information instead of just people having being happy and excited about who you are and, and coming in. Now you're just pissing people off. Yeah, Len. Well, I do know that um, just recently there was this um, uh, um, um, uh, effort by employees at an Amazon uh, location in uh, Alabama, actually, to unionize. And I believe that um, that was quite a contentious thing uh, in the public. And so maybe it is for some reason, if it is that um, client, maybe there are some 
issues um, related to things like that. We don't know, right? Because we don't know who it is. It, but there may be or maybe mitigating circumstances of why they might not. I'm I'm saying we would be excited, but maybe not everyone. Yeah, I mean, there's there's really only one potential grocer client that a whole lot of people have very strong opinions about right now. You know, it's like, oh, Albertsons? Oh, who cares? You know? Right. <laughs> but then I like, I went through their, their application and everything else, all their pictures with the fine tooth comb and I'm like studying everything. And then finally I, I said to my husband, look, their grocer is like how many letters? Maybe it's Sprouts and not Amazon because Amazon has to be like Amazon fresh, right? So it has to have both words. So then, you know, I'm just like, well, grocer, how many letters is that? And Sprouts is how many letters? Maybe it's that, which gets me excited. Then Amazon fresh. And I'm like, uh, but you know, to Michael's points, like, really there's just going to be so much and amazon and i get enough boxes here with my husband who supports e-commerce so much and it's just it's it's a bit much but you know Sprouts Sprout usually doesn't well. build a new building sprout goes into an old bonds usually i've seen them all over la in my driving it's rare that they build a new building so i don't think it's sprouts and, and last time they said um, they didn't want gossip and the word to get out about who the who the grocer is because they've had bad experiences. So who else would it be? And and Dean last time sort of told us who it was, right, Dean? Yeah, I don't have any confirmation. I just an educated guess. I mean, professional opinion, but you know, I, I think Barry's point. Yeah, you could you could look at that uh, here. You know, I think I've seen Sprouts definitely go into new buildings in outer areas, um, in, in newly development areas, Inland Empire, etc. But um, that's right. You know, I I think that uh, you know it, it's there aren't that many players. We can kind of by process of elimination, you know, be smart about it, but- uh, If they apply for a liquor license, we'll know. Yes, uh, and yeah. uh, to that point, uh, Sprouts doesn't sell full line of liquor. They sell beer and wine only. Good. I, Just, I also think you know. <laughs> that, I also think that this, whatever grocer is gonna take some, perhaps business out of the Trader Joe's parking lot away, maybe gonna, take some business away from the Rouse. It's, you know, we're cutting up the pie again. So are they better choices? I don't know what their offerings are gonna be, but you know, um, you've got to perhaps wait and see and look at the big picture here. So yeah. some traffic patterns may be relieved from other areas, you know, specifically probably Trader Joe's, is that, that could use a little bit of relief. Yeah, I have to have that intersection re-engineered though, because that is one big nightmare over there in that intersection. Okay. Oh, Terry Austin has a hand up. A hand Thank up you. Or... Thank yeah, you. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Thank you for mentioning the Historical Cultural Commission tomorrow. I just want to uh, just say to anybody who might be interested in calling in that um, this is only about the historical and um, any complaints or feelings or comments about traffic or um, noise or the developer it, it is not uh, relevant for this meeting. It's only about how um, your comments would be about if you're in support of this about how important it is to our community culturally and your personal history going over the years or you know what you think the value is to the community but it's it's not about anything else this commission doesn't have any purvey over any other things other than historical so um, there is a template letter on saveweddington.org if anybody's interested that's already ready to go and uh, we appreciate any calls in, but I just want to say that it, it won't help if they're anti-development calls. It really only helps if they're pro-historic. Thank you. And Terry, you mentioned a template letter, but I, just to clarify, it sounds like 
it's too late to submit written comments at this point. And no, you can you can up to the day seven. of the meeting starts oh, I, at eleven a.m. They said that you could you had to get the them in twenty four hours before. Um, you you actually can submit things the day of as well before the meet anything up until the meeting starts will be counted. So just send it in. Yeah, just send it in. Yeah. Also, because they might be congratulating themselves because of quote unquote saving the center of the dome. Mm. Okay. Anything else from anyone? Has everyone uh, registered to vote? Have you? Okay. Yep. Lana is running as am I. Jesse, we will miss. Hopefully, should we resume a land use committee? I will be calling on you. Richard. I got my ballot in the mail today. Did you? Did you? Me too. Richard's running too. It's working. <laughs> um, aside from that, everyone's good. Everyone's happy. Everyone's okay. Everyone vaccinated. I'm yeah. getting the second one on Friday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to some normalcy. It's definitely getting busier. It is sure. All by the traffic, right? Oh. It's back. Even though I never go out, I just feel it when I do. All right. Aside from that, thank you all so much. I really appreciate all your help, your input, and your enthusiasm for Studio City <laughs> and the forgotten end of Ventura Boulevard. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Great job. Bye. Thanks. Bye.